Germany 2, Hungary 0, another thoroughly entertaining game at Euro 2024 and another decent performance from Germany, although not quite as convincing as what we saw in the first game, mainly because Hungary actually had a very decent defensive setup. So let's get straight into it, look at what Germany were trying to do on the ball and how Hungary were trying to defend that, but then also go in the other way, how Hungary actually had some threat in this game as well, and they were certainly much better than Scotland in terms of competing with Germany, being tight at the back, but also offering something going forward. So we'll start off with Germany on the ball, because I think naturally it makes sense. They had a lot of time on the ball once again, in terms of playing out from the back, it was very easy for the likes of Neuer, Tarr, Rudiger. It was very easy in the first phase, it was a case of moving forward towards the middle phase. But the question is, of course, once again going to be, what sort of shape are they going to use? What sort of structure are they going to use? And to be honest, it was very, very similar to what we saw in the first game. So Rudiger is going to step slightly to the right-hand side. Jonathan Tarr is going to play as the middle centre-back. And then Tony Cruz once again is given that licence to drop deep into almost a left centre-back position. Now, the reason Germany want to do that is because in this area, Cruz can get more time on the ball in international football, and then you can use his passing range from there. However, the other thing that Germany also done at times was actually used Cruz between the two centre-backs. And I wonder if that was to try and limit the counter-attacking threat of Hungary. But more often than not, Cruz was still on the left-hand side. Of course, with Cruz dropping deep, it means Mittelstadt is going to fly forward down the left-hand side because he isn't needed in these deeper areas. And Wurz is going to come infield. Gundogan is, of course, going to roam in this area. Andrik is going to become a solo pivot for the main part of the game, but not the whole time. And then Muziala is going to tuck in on the right-hand side. And Joshua Kimmich is going to go reasonably high down the right, although not quite as high as Mittelstadt. In terms of how Hungary are going to set up, they are going to get a lot of men behind the ball. They're using this back five shape. And initially it looks like a 5-2-3, but it can quickly collapse into more of a 5-3-2 like this. Again, the aim being to get lots of men behind the ball. And this is exactly what Germany would have expected. A Hungary side which wanted to sit deep and try and restrict the space. And Germany were ready for that. We saw it in the first game. They are a brilliant side at breaking teams down, moving the ball forward, using the technical ability of the midfielders to eventually really hurt and damage the opposition. And it was no different in this game. The German approach was, was very, very similar to what we saw against Scotland. Cruz was the man looking to dictate the play. Once again, he had a wonderful game in terms of his pass completion. He was, he was absolutely brilliant and he moves the ball forward well. However, the big difference between this game and the Scotland game we saw the other day was that Hungary were much more aggressive with their defensive approach, particularly from the back five. You see, Germany do this really clever thing where sometimes they're going to drop deep towards the ball, which draws you in, and then another time they're going to spin in behind, which causes you to drop. And that is something that Scotland really struggled with, knowing which way to go. And of course, we eventually saw that Scotland got stuck in the middle of nowhere with their midfield high, their defence deep, leaving these gaps in here. And Germany did look to exploit that sort of area once again, getting these three players, Wurz, Gundogan and Muziala, all behind the Hungarian midfield three, looking to operate in these spaces. And they did succeed in doing that. So as Chris is going to come forward with the ball, and you know, let's squeeze this whole team up, because they were much higher than this. Let's squeeze the whole team up like so. When Chris is going to have the ball here, we can see the Germany attackers in similar spaces to what they were in the first game. But the difference here was that as the ball does go into someone like Florian Wurz, and he looks to get the ball and then turn, Rather than having all the space in the world in this area to go into, Hungary were very aggressive with the usage of their centre-backs. So we regularly saw the centre-backs stepping forward to engage the ball. So yes, Wurtz might be able to take a touch and turn, but by the time he's actually then got his head up after the turn, the Hungarian players are there, the centre-backs are there going strong into the challenge to stop Germany really getting any momentum going. And this was a problem that Germany had. When they went through the middle of the pitch, they struggled. Obviously, they've got excellent technicians, Muziala, Gundogan, Wurtz. But they did struggle in these areas because Hungary have got six players, the three centre-backs plus the three central midfielders, really condensing it, reducing the spaces, not giving players time on the ball, being, yes, in a deep block, but aggressive from that position. And actually, defensively, they've done really well. they also done well because, obviously, this narrow approach allowed them to force Germany wider. And when Germany go wider, to the likes of Mittelstadt and Kimmich, as good as they are at football, they're great players. They are not one versus one players. You know, against a low block and you work the ball out to Kimmich, against a left wing back, if you had a winger, for example, in this situation, you would expect him to go up against Kirkes, take him on, maybe beat him a few times, get a ball into the box. But Kimmich doesn't really possess the capabilities to do that. And then Mittelstadt on the other side as well. A bit more of an attacking outlet, in my opinion. A bit quicker, can go down the outside. But again, it's not ideal. He's not a one versus one specialist. And this is why, for large parts of the game, Germany found it very, very difficult to find space to break down the Hungary defence because Hungary were very, very solid defensively. However, 
they did eventually come up with a solution. And it was actually, weirdly enough, to drop some of their forwards deeper. Dropping some of the forwards deeper actually allowed them to have more attacking threat. A bit of an interesting concept. We saw something similar from Portugal the other day. So how did this actually work? Well, it comes from Florian Vert moving into a deeper space, into this area here, at times into the double pivot with Andrik. Now, the reason that you do this is to drag the hungry players out. Previously, we saw the centre-backs going tight on Vert. This now asks the question, because the centre-back wants to go tight to him, but you can only go so far, right, as a centre-back. You can't really go squeeze all the way into these areas. And at times it leaves you initially following him. You know, let's say Verts receives the ball and he takes the touches here. You want to follow him. But then when he gets to this area here, it's a bit too far to go tight with him. Now, what this does is, of course, it passes the man on to the Hungarian midfielders. So Sabozlai is now going to pick him up. But it leaves the centre back just a little bit caught in no man's land. And this is where then the movement of the front two is, is genius. Kai Havertz and Gundogan in particular. Gundogan's movement, his understanding of when to go in behind, when to come short, and when to link the play. It's just brilliant, to be honest. So as you've kind of drawn the defenders out, you then go to someone like Tony Cruz, who, of course, is probably the best footballer in the world at then finding this next pass into here. It could be Kai Havertz spinning in behind. Again, it could be Gundogan getting into these positions. But this is how Germany eventually attacked the game eventually really well. Again, Hungary defended brilliantly for large parts of the game and were, and were nearly spot on. And to be honest, the two German goals were quite fortunate. Hungary's defensive approach was very, very good, but this little tweak from Nagelsmann was the key. It kind of dragged certain Hungary players almost too close to each other and opened up spaces elsewhere. And like I said, when you've got Tony Cruz who can then fire it through the lines or Andrik as well, you create chances and Germany done that and eventually broke down this very stubborn Hungary defence and Germany deserve a lot of credit for that. Technically, again, the players are phenomenal. I mean, Muziala is he's a joke, isn't he? He's an absolute dream of a footballer. An absolute dream. I thought he was phenomenal once again in this game. I think he's one of the best players in the world and he's only getting better. Again, his physicality particularly is incredibly underrated. And then there's all the ball carrying, the passing, the striking, everything. He's one of the best dribblers on the planet at the moment. So that is, of course, all positives for Germany. They had a problem early on. Hungary deserve a lot of credit for that. But Germany just had too much for them in the end. However, I do just quickly want to touch on one thing, because whilst Germany deserve a lot of credit for this performance, as they did the other night as well, I do also believe that a couple of weaknesses are becoming apparent, so I quickly want to cover that. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone and now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. So Germany have won their two games 5-1 and 2 0 so to sit here and talk about weaknesses for the last couple of minutes might sound a little bit bizarre. But I do think, despite the very good structure, there are clear problems with the way that Germany are playing, which should be fine in the group stage, but in the knockout competitions, in the knockout stages, sorry, against better teams, they might need to change something. So what are those issues? First of all, it would be the lack of wide threat. Mittelstadt and Kimmich aren't really giving them enough going forward in the final third. Could you get a winger in for someone like Wurtz? It sounds crazy to drop him, but could you do that to give yourself a bit more of a two-way threat? Possibly. That's one issue for Germany, but not really the main one. The main one is defending the transition. There is a major problem here because when Germany first lose the ball, if you can break the first line of the counter press, Germany have a big problem in the sense that Florian Wirtz is not someone who immediately wants to switch on and track the Bosley all the way into this area. He just doesn't want to do it. You've also got Muziala on the other side as well, who does work hard. But again, his instinct when possession is lost isn't to go chasing his man back towards his own goal. It's not really what he wants to do. And as a result, you can get a little bit of time in this midfield here when you look to counter against Germany. And this brings us on to the next problem. Andrik does become quite isolated. And he looked a little bit questionable in some of his duels defensively, kind of resorting to fouls quite a lot of the time, particularly in the first game. So again, that's something to look at. And then also this right-hand side for Germany, or the left-hand side for the counter-attacking team. Kimmich, again, is another player who doesn't have the athleticism to get back. And Kirkes, several occasions in this game, was able to get forward out here. And this is definitely a way you can hurt this Germany side. If you can counter, if you can transition using the wide spaces, so initially carrying through the middle and then working the ball wide, there is a weakness there because Kimmich lacks the athleticism. And then on the other side, over here, Tony Cruz. I love him, right? He's probably my favourite midfielder of all time. I absolutely adore him. Defensively in the transition, though, he's, he's not great. He becomes 
borderline useless at defending some of these situations. He's just not made for it, right? He's made for everything he does on the ball, not defending a transition. So this is perhaps a problem for Germany, something which they can look at moving forward. But I mean, in terms of for now, they've got away with it in both games. Hungary offered more threat than what Scotland did, and Hungary perhaps should have taken advantage of this a little bit more. I think they created some really good opportunities from these wide areas before then getting the ball into the box. So yeah, Germany get away with it for today. But I would say just keep an eye on it. Of course, they are still phenomenal. On the ball, they are they are dreamy to watch, particularly when you get that trio in behind Havertz on the ball, close to each other, Cruz firing the ball in towards them. It's very, very fun to watch. Very fun. They're great at breaking teams down. But just keep an eye on that transition against them. Just keep an eye on it. For future games, not for today, for future games. In terms of actually for today, we've finished there. Germany have won again. They have qualified from the group. They look very strong. It will be interesting to see how much they rotate in the next game. But yeah, they've done everything they needed to do so far. So fair play Germany, fair play Nagelsmann, and of course, all the players as well. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.